All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurdley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday evening, December 7th. I don't remember. I think we got one or two more weeks of these, and we're going to take a break for a couple of weeks, enjoy the holidays. Let's see how many we have. I think we only got one more this week and next week, and we're done. With that said, I'm a little uncertain on what I'm going to do tomorrow for the uh, trade findings and adjustments. We've taken on a kid. His mother's coming to visit him. A uh, good kid. And uh, I may be meeting with his mother. So whenever I find out what time that is tomorrow, uh, I may be canceling the trade findings and adjustments. And we'll do a recording that we'll send out via email when it's done sometime later on tomorrow night. For all intents and purposes, we're probably going to go over the trades we did about a week and a half ago. Talk about taking some profits or when you should take profits and call it a trade findings and adjustments. With that said, last week, two things I want to point out. The S&P only rose 1.7%. We did significantly better than that at Hurley Investments. But more importantly... I kind of giggle because healthcare and technology kind of outweighed the market other than the energy sector. And I'm not sure I understand the energy sector because people were really giving ExxonMobil crap other than the fact that if you're looking at energy uh, separate than utilities, I don't know, maybe there's some big... Uh, some big propane energy that I don't know about. I know a lot of people use propane to heat homes, but still, I'm not sure there's there's more propane people than natural gas. Even with that said, I don't know why energy would be at all up 10.5%, other than it's been beat up like there's no tomorrow. With that said, non-farm payrolls rose by 245,000 last month. Not really huge. Nowhere close to the estimate of 500,000. Unemployment slipped down to 0 0.2. And I think we're going to hear a lot this week about the, uh, what, December 14th or 15th or 17th, the uh, Electoral College. And with that said, I would assume that we're going to see Trump leave. Um, even if you do believe that there was a conspiracy and that there was voter fraud, I'm going to say, unfortunately, there's not enough time for it to get all the way up through the courts. And I'm not sure what you would do to unseat a president if it was proven that there was some voter fraud by a foreign country like China, who's heavily invested with George Soros in our voting machines. I just don't know how you unseat a, a seating president with that. So it'll be interesting to see where we end up. Okay, let's see here. With that said, William, I know you're new, and everyone, you can welcome uh, Jim, I don't want to say Jefferson, but James. Uh, we have James and Darren from Chicago. They're here for the first time. Welcome. There are a couple of people that just said welcome, that typed in welcome to you, James and, and uh, Darren. With that said, James, you usually go by Jefferson, though, right? I don't understand how those two go together. So if I've called you wrong the whole time and should have called you James and said Jefferson, I apologize. But here we go. Um, I took a little snapshot. And I just want you to take a look at this. This is someone's portfolio. They're doing extremely well. 
But if I was to highlight that our cash on deposit on a $612,000 portfolio was $196,000. What would you guys tell me? What would you guys tell me if you saw a third, 34%, 35% of the portfolio ish, 33% was in cash? And it has been in cash probably for a couple months at least now. What would you guys tell me? <laughs> I love it. A good strategy at a current crazy time. Probably a bit on the high side, but I would agree with you. Seems like you have a lot of cash for this time of the year. And that's kind of what I was expecting. And I know this comes from James and Darren. You're too cash heavy. You should be fully invested. And I, I know I'm kind of setting you guys up because I asked you to write in what you told me uh, earlier today. And... I mean, it's funny, it's, uh, that one just said, it kind of seems to be like mine. We are a bit cash heavy right now on a couple of accounts, but this is the interesting point. And Darren, um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to just make this quick comment because I know you and James have talked about it. And here's the big difference. If you can make $225,000, and let's do the math. We're going to take 612 minus 225. Means you start out with 387. 225 divided by 387 is a 58.1% return year to date. So we're talking about this particular account. Good guy, been with me for forever, is looking at a 58.13% return. And to his credit, he's uh, said, Kevin, you do whatever you want. I'm going to judge you on your results. He's been with me for a while. We've done a lot of collar trading. We've picked up a lot of shares. He's uh, sat through the years where the collar trading has just picked up shares. But we're killing it. Real money, a $387,000 portfolio is up to $225 this year. First question that an individual like this would say is, Great job. In fact, for those of us that understand trading, if I was even able to do this all year long with a third of his portfolio in cash, that means he's taken a third less risk than everybody else in the stock market especially those that are in all those mutual funds, right? And so James and Darren, I'm going to say this really simple and really easy. If I could keep him with a third in cash and give him a 58% return, Darren and James, he's taking a third less risk than you ever have in the stock market. And he's kicking your butts for the return that you've had compared to the mutual funds you've been in. Now, an educated trader 
And James, I'm going to pick on you just a little bit. Someone that's not been fed a bunch of garbage and crap from the education system. A real trader that's licensed, bonded, and insured can get these kind of returns in real life. It's not a fake return. It's not a made-up return. It's a real return having a taking a third less risk than you ever have in the stock market and kicking the trash out of your 4.5%, 5% that you got this year. I'm going to make one other comment. You thought you had a 15% return, which means most likely you were either told that by your previous broker or you more than likely saw something that said your fund was up 15%. But when we went through the real return, your fund might have made 15%, your money might have made 15%, but you're at, you know, four and a half. Welcome to Wall Street. Ah, but Kevin, if you had that fully invested, you might have made a 75% return. Probably not. Probably would have had in something that would have lost me some money. In real life, James and Darren, the key to being a real trader, a real money manager, someone that can make real money in the stock market, not fictitious, plain money in their heads, not the crap that you've been for Mr. Pirate Man, thousand dollar portfolio Ooh, he made 200 percent. he made three you know two grand a year Ooh, no annualized crap here this is a real return and the best thing that a real investor a real trader will tell you it's never about how much money you make it's about how you control the risk as you invest and trade. You don't lose money in a bullish market. At least you shouldn't, right? You don't lose money when everything's up. Everyone makes money when the stock market's up. At least they should, right? The risk is when the stock market is down. That's why we add protection. We ensure our stock ownership. We pick up tons of shares. And here you can have, in this particular case, for a couple months now, since nothing looked particularly good, or you're otherwise invested in some of the, the positions anyway, This individual is going to make a great return this year, probably having a third of his portfolio in cash for up to a three-month period of time. You don't force trades. You don't place a trade every week. That's absolutely asinine and stupid. You look for opportunities, and you run with those opportunities. A lot of people have asked me here recently, but Kevin, you're a little worried things are going to fall. And I am. In real life, I found the article that I want you guys to go through on your own. It's called the Buffett Indicator. And I've got Mr. Lance Roberts that, you know, I kept all his crap in there. Short, an answer, uh, short answer is, I wanted you to see who he is. Private banking guy does this, does that. He uh, is a chief editor for Real Investment Report, you know, weekly subscriber newsletters, blah, 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 blah. The short answer is pretty interesting to see how he breaks down the Warren Buffett indicator and the trap, as he calls it. Please go through what you're looking for. 
The short answer is it comes to valuation. And I particularly like this one because he uses the word BS. <laughs> um, you look for undervalued positions that can take you higher. You look for stocks that have traded higher in the past and should trade higher in the future. And plain and simple, you can't time everything. Valuation models, as it says here, were never meant to be market timing indicators. But when you hit a certain level of price per earnings, price per share, price for investment, that the market is due for a crash or a pullback. When valuations get extended, you're overpaying for companies' profits or returns. And the funny thing is, you know, they're gonna talk about the, the Warren Buffett indicator. The reality is that we're going to see taxes increase for companies by at least 33%. 21% will go to 28, could be as high as 35, that's the 40% higher taxes. There's no amount of stimulus that makes up for a 40% higher tax bill. I also believe the Democrats will most likely cut down some of these loopholes. So some of the things that some of us get to write off for business expenses, like this past year, we have not been able to write off um, restaurants going out to eat or anything like that, which maybe is why we have the coronavirus because someone got pissed off that business, small businesses can't write off uh, meals anymore. <laughs> um, things are going to change. Things are going to change and plain and simple, when you see market capitalization or or extended valuations, someone's gonna take a profit, some hedge fund will take a profit, and the dominoes start coming on down. Please read through this article. We finally have someone saying in better English than I am, hey, Year-over-year -year growth for the S&P is out of whack. The earnings per share on the S&P 500 is out of whack. You have too much of a, of a distance between them. Things need to come back down. Make sure you read through this article. Make sure you understand the correlations they're trying to make between basic fundamentals, market fundamentals that we went over in level one of most educations that you've been in. And really it comes down to the government can't buy your way, at least not for forever, out of paying the piper. There is no reason, mathematically, fundamentally, our stock market should be up this year. Our GDP is awful. Ah, uh, but we're gonna have some pent up demand. That's true. But we're not going to make up for a year's worth of, of missed earnings. Garden restaurants, Olive Garden, um, uh, I can't, I forgot the other one that's the big one. The lobster one, Red Lobster. They can't make up for a year's worth of missed, um, missed revenue. They're going to have to take down their earnings and their valuations. There are a lot of industries they are going to have to take down their earnings and valuations. And when that happens, you're going to see a bubble in the market crash. 
Can someone tell me what's the bubble that we're in in 2020? What bubble are we in right now? Can't say we've been in it for a couple of years. Low interest rate bubbles one, bingo. There you go. Good answer, James. The stimulus bubble, number two. Those are the ones I was thinking of. Uh, interest rate, I actually would have said easy money. The easy money bubble and the uh, the stimulus bubble. We've been on, we, I can't believe how much money we printed. It's almost like we're trying to lose our reserve currency status. The debt we have is ridiculous. The good news is China's even worse. But watch the talk, you know, Brexit's not coming to pass. Watch the talk come out that we're gonna do some type of basket of currencies for the reserve currency. Where three or four, the Euro, the, the dollar, the, Maybe the you know the Chinese yuan yen. Who knows? Anything to keep us from our economic advantage that we've had. If you guys were to ask me what I think we're going, what's going to happen here for the next, well, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to say we're definitely going to keep going higher. We're going to go higher. We're going to go through a Christmas rally. It's not rational. That's the beauty of Christmas rallies. They're not rational. Dow is still bullish. S&P is still bullish, but just touching over, overbought. And the NASDAQ is bullish, and it is technically overbought. It's this time of the year. We see this. In fact, if I go through some of our core holdings, I love seeing stocks that we're seeing breakouts. We have a breakout on Apple. Broke out on the trend line. And the pennant, if you, I guess it's a flag, right? You have your flag. It was condensing. And boom, we had a breakout to the upside. Love it. Perfect. Boeing. Long, long term. 240. They say we're breaking above it. I kind of think it's 250. But if we break above 250, 280, 300 to the upside. Another 30, 35, maybe 50 points higher. Absolutely love it. Uh, let's take a look at Baidu. Let's see if Baidu's breaking out. Not quite, kind of in the middle. Dang it, we almost had it a couple of weeks ago. Bank of America. Broke out, still running. 32 by the end of the year, maybe as high as 35. Ford. Oh, come on, Ford. Break out to the high side. It's close. Um, what else do we have? We have Disney. Broke out to the high side. Up past 150, where I thought I'd be by the end of the year. Um, Under Armour. Broke out to the high side. Really? Ugh, there's no reason why this one couldn't be up at 20 by the end of the year. Visa. Dang it, we're really capped on Visa. Bugger should be higher. I got an interesting article on Visa. It's that time of the year right now that we're seeing some breakouts to the upside. <laughs> um, someone just typed in, Bitey better get going. No kidding, for crying out loud. Um, Pretty neat to see some of these upside opportunities. The the biggest one, company that just bugs the crud out of me, it's so hard to read. Look at Micron's breakout. 
That one is just right for a pullback is all I'm going to say. Uh, if I put in here, someone talked about CRM recently. A couple of you, actually. That's what I see in CRM. I'm not a, I'm not sold on it yet. If you were to put CRM under 50-day or 200-day, that's more what I'm looking at. I'm looking at what big money would look like. Kind of in no man's land in the middle. I thought it would go down and come closer to touch the 200-day. So I was going to enter a position. It'd probably be closer to 210 than it would be right here. And you have a, a cap on it at 249. Again, if you take a quick peek at CRM that does more trend line, um, nice to see it broke its trend line, but it's coming back in. Probably broke out of a Bollinger Band as well, and it's coming back in. It just, I don't know. It's one that I don't like the entry point right now. With that said, could have had a heck of a day. Market down negative 0 0.19. He was up 60. Our group or most of our group here, no Parker. Up more than that. There we go. Up 98. So we're up uh, 0.66 on a 0 0.19 down day. Actually, it's 113. So let's do a quick check here. 113 divided by 15, 5, 50. Uh, we're at a 0 0.7. 0 0.72 on a 0 0.19. And... The other group that's more of a, yeah, they're even a little bit better. These guys are more of just a 401k, SEP IRA stuff. Not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, if we were to go and take a quick peek at Neil Parker and what's making us our money today, Boeing Apple, Under Armour was third, Newmont Mining, Baidu, Facebook, Visa. Kind of disappointing because that means Ford and Disney. Disney, Bank of America is our biggest losers today. All right. Um, James and Darren, just to show you a couple things that are real life, real trades. If you do the math, $2.75 is going to be worth $30. If you do that math, it's like a 1,500% return. If you do the one at 67 cents on like... $35, you're then looking at uh, let's do that one. Like a 5,800% return, something like that. Are there just Apple that you can do it on? No. You can do really well and get some 100% returns on Boeing. We had one on Square. We shut down last week, last Monday, if you want to go look at it. But uh, we got some good leave calls, $7 at $36 right now. That's roughly a 500% return. $8 on 22, 200% return. 4.99 on $19, you know, almost a 400% return there. In real life, you can make money by protecting. And this is what some real life accounts should look like. All righty. Going through earnings, Toll Brothers today, AutoZone, GameStop tomorrow, Adobe on Wednesday. 
uh, Broadcom, Costco on Thursday, Lululemon play is, uh, oh, I might, I, I'm not remembering, I'm blanking. Uh, Oracle and Vail Mountains are there. Economic reports, not a whole lot this week. It's a pretty slow week. Internationally, I didn't write anything down. In fact, as I went through and looked at our international, uh, I'll look at it with you, and I just didn't see anything that truly made me want to stop and uh, put anything in here. And Sunday, today, we had some China exports trade balance. Didn't jump out at me. Nothing on Japan that I worried about. European Union, nothing that stands out. Japan's gross domestic product, it'll... You know, it's supposed to affect our, our futures. It really didn't do anything. Tomorrow, what well, could affect our futures? Nothing that stands out. You know, the Euro gross domestic product employment change, it didn't change it before. Nothing important there. China consumer price index and inflation. I think our Christmas rally supersedes that and Canada's uh, interest rate decision. European Union Council meeting on Thursday is red. Didn't see it as important. A lot of Germany reports are coming up. Shouldn't affect our Christmas rally. ECB interest rate decision. Maybe, but the last two or three didn't. So I'm not gonna, I'm not too worried about that on Wednesday. Or Thursday, excuse me. Friday, European Union Council meeting again. You know, the, nothing here stood out that was anything that I said, hey, I need to put that in here so that clientele know about it. There's nothing that stood out to me that I thought I needed to, to introduce to you guys. So I think we're good. Again, big question, how far led stocks run to a Christmas rally? And do we sit through the tax harvesting or do we take our profits with that tax harvesting? That's kind of where I'm sitting and where I'm trying to make my decisions. Your movie theater experience is going extinct. I'm so bummed that I'm going to have to go buy HBO Max. So that way I can have Amazon Prime and Apple Prime and Netflix and the Disney package. And now I'm going to go buy this one so that I can go watch Wonder Woman in 1984 and listen to all the cool music I grew up with. I'm going to have to go buy HBO Max. So on. Christmas, my family can go watch Wonder Woman. It'll be interesting to see if we get back to, to the movies. And personally, I'm a friend of the movies. I, For me, I love getting lost in the movies in the afternoon when I can... Uh, when I have that opportunity. Um, it's fun. For me, it's fun. It's, uh, I don't know. Tub of popcorn, a soda, two hours in the movie. I absolutely love it. It's kind of a bummer that that there's some that think that the experience is over. Um, I'm not sure what AMC is going to do. I'm not sure what Cinemark's going to do. I think the exclusive movies when they come out where you want to get there on the Friday night and there's all that buzz. Uh, you know, are we never going to have a uh, are we no longer going to have that that opportunity? I don't know. Jim, I'll definitely do that. And um, we'll see. We'll see where we end up. We'll see where things head off to. 
It'll be interesting to, to see what we do. Please read through the article. Really, I think that pull of theaters getting movies before the rest of us, the, the opportunities for, for us to go have that experience might be changing. And I'll tell you how well we do at my house with Wonder Woman on Christmas Day, not going to a movies to the theaters to watch it. Second, I have uh, the Warren Buffett. Again, please go through and spend your time going through it. It's really some understanding of where I kind of get my information from. Plain and simple, we're due for a pullback. And I would tell you one more time that we'll most likely go through what we went through last year, this coming year, one more time. It would not surprise me to see a 38 to 45% drop um, at the beginning of this year. All right. Um, boy, there's a lot in that Warren Buffett stuff. Please take the time to read it. With that said, I'm giving you the opposite side. Paul Tudor. So the question is, do you like Warren Buffett or do you like Paul Tudor Jones, right? Uh, he sees an absolute sonic boom for pent-up pent up demand. I think the problem is that we still have 30-some-odd unemployed people. And so if we're looking at pent-up demand, I think that pent-up demand has to be in conjunction with um, pent-up cash to spend if we don't have that cash to spend if people are pen, penny pitching if so many people have been out of work i don't see a supersonic boom in 2021 two great questions just came in we protect for the drop so the short answer is yes core positions will get uh blah, 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 blah. we will get some protection back on leaps we're going to take our profits and we're going to run with it so plain and simple, core positions will add the insurance back on. Leaps, uh, I'm looking to take those profits from those leaps. About the only one that I might keep in there is Apple. Everything else that's a leap, I'm planning on cashing it in and taking the profits. Great questions, you two. Um, here we go. Feel, feel free, again, I'm gonna show both sides of the, the story here. If you like Paul or Warren, the choice is to you. Warren Buffett or, or uh, Paul Tudor Jones, take your pick. I like that uh, weekend card payments rose by 15% through Black Friday. Dang it, that says to me that Visa should be popping. Although Visa, of course, they're used to climb by 5%. I have a bummer. It increased 27% year over year, but the card present fell 7%. Uh, yes, I still believe in Visa, but I'm putting in both sides of the story for you to see. HHS Chief sees vaccine for all by second quarter. I'm going to call third quarter and stand by it. Maude and uh, Dr. Gupa will probably beat me over the head. <laughs> I just don't see it. They don't have enough of it made to, to fulfill this, especially when Europe's getting it before we are. Well, those Ford people, the new Ford Bronco Sport, an interesting article on one of the, uh, the VPs that drove it around. Definitely take a peek on this one. And I think that's it for today. Questions. Do you guys have questions that I can answer for you? or questions that you'd like to ask me. Uh, Darren and James, this is normally where we spend a little bit of time, whether there's something you've thought about through the week or over the weekend, I go ahead and I get those answered. So I'm gonna give you guys 30 seconds to type something in. Uh, Darren, how many core positions do you have? I fluctuate between six and 11. Occasionally, I might have 13, but usually between 6 and 11. Right now, my core positions would be Apple, Bank of America, Baidu, uh, Disney, Visa, Under Armour, Ford. And I would say that's probably it right there. 
Someone might say, well, what about Boeing? Boeing's not a core position. We just have some people that are in it. Same thing with Facebook there. But those would be my core positions. Um, <laughs> if you now had a beer, which one would you choose and why? It'd be Coors because Keeves, um, Keeves' father-in-law used to work for him for 27 years. That's what my dad used to drink. So I'd be a Coors guy if I was drinking beer right now. <laughs> um what dates were the virtual trades placed on apple where are the strike prices um so ida those ones were actually last year's leaps that we held on to so those ones were probably placed in april of last year before the split and then if you remember we uh with the split it usually goes down, so we added the short calls on them for split protection. Hey, I appreciate it. Three of you said great info. I'm just trying to let you guys see what, what I see. I appreciate it. Um, anything in E-Trade changing from the, the Morgan Stanley side? Not yet. I thought I was going to lose my guy. Uh, I use Mike Lamagne at uh, E-Trade. He does a ton for me. He's the whole reason why I'm staying there. Nothing looks like it's changing or being any different. They're just trying to gather assets. It wouldn't surprise me if you guys get hit up for someone managing your money. Watch out for it. But uh, with that said, not much that you need to uh, to worry about as of yet. I can tell you that I feel their platform has a couple more bugs in it than it did last year. So they obviously probably fired the some of the coders that worked on it, and they're trying to bring them over. And, boy, there have been a couple issues where we're like, hey, where's that money at? What about this? What about that? Hey, your code's wrong. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, I've heard that a couple times. Well, it doesn't matter. It's not exactly accurate on your year day gains. It's like, well, it sure as hell should be. Figure it out. Get it right. Teaching that a short call means it's a credit and it's not a loss. You get to keep your credit and you get a profit on your stock. I think that took them like 13 business days to get some covered call numbers right in our accounts. All right. Hey, guys, have a great evening. I appreciate you being here with me today. We will, uh, I will, I will let you know tomorrow. Check your email before you sign on. I might cancel it and just have to do a little bit of a uh, pre-recorded something. I've got to spend a little bit of time with this kid's mom we have over here so she knows that we're doing the best we can to kind of take care of him. All right, guys. Hey, have a good one. Take care. I will talk to you soon. Good night, everyone.